we're starting off with two of the top players in the game. World number one, Jason Belmonte versus the pro with the fro. Fan fave Kyle Troop looks to pick his way to an upset. from Taylorsville, North Carolina. Give it up for Kyle Troop. The number one seed all the way from Orange, New South Wales, Australia. Give it up for Jason Belmonte. Uh, who? Bel Belmonte, um, I heard he's pretty good, but you know, the trash talk's over with Chris now and I need to find Jason. That's how you start. That's a great start. 15 to 6. He's got the Sharpie ready <laughs> to add his name and move on to the round of eight after one shot. Ah. Messenger! Get in your home! Then goes to the sidewall, comes flying off and slams into the 10 and says, hey, where's that money you owe me? Back to back opening jacks for Belmo. Look out. Belmo, perfect through three. 23.4 on the right lane. Hey Rob, what's Australian for hand bone? Right now, Kyle might want to start thinking about that second game. Two seed we'll see in action in the coming weeks. Belmo drops the nickel here in Portland. Two points, you get a point for winning the game. Maybe figuring things out just in time for the second match. With the big one, ditto for West Milan. Hard to come back against this guy, though. He knows what's at stake and what's on the line, and he is pure business. Game one in the books, it was all Belmo. I would say I've definitely figured out the transition of the lane. Uh, I was prepared for it, uh, but I do need to just make some better shots this game. Rinse and repeat. Four good shots will never beat Jason Belmont. Aston Portland won the doubles title. There you go. There you go. But reaction after a shot, completely different. Stoic Jason Belmont. There we go. That was interesting. Uh -oh. Converted 15% of the time on the tour. Yeah! No let up. There you go. Now he's in the right part of the lane. Triple for true. At the arrows. That looks good. It is good. And all of a sudden, we have a four-pin match. Guess who just took the lead? Kyle Troop. He's got that crowd behind him, too. <laughs> Strike number five of game two. Double for Belmo. Good stuff. Didn't like this one though. Wow, we're tied. Oh, and now it comes down to just two frames to move on to the round of eight. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Next score is 60. Have that. He, 
He's in a pretty good spot. Oh, man. Must have strike end. He doesn't get it. Belmo moves on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What a horrible, horrible break. Got a fortunate break in the in the roll-off with uh, him leaving the nine pin and, and me leaving that ring in ten. Poor timing. I mean, I could have rung ten the first shot in the tenth and he could have solid nine the second shot in his tenth and then I would have lost. So, pretty lucky. I think I just overhit the one in the tenth for the win. I wanted it to really go through the pins right because the further left I was going, the more angle I was creating. I didn't want a flat ten, so I overhit it and then uh, under hit it in the fill shot and thought, ah, it's somewhere in the middle there. I think I was kind of fortunate that uh, he was kind of moving into where I had already been on that right lane. And I knew that it was only a matter of time until he jumped on the other side of it like I did. And then, you know, he had the capability to strike out. So, you know, I really wanted to, to win that, you know, without going to the roll off. Because this crowd is so amazing that I, I always feel like, you know, if I just come out of my zone just a little bit, it, they take you to the sky, right? And it's so hard to come back down and Carl is so energetic. He was going to play to the crowd enough for the both of us. So I wanted to just do my thing, keep everything as even as possible and, you know, try to get the win, which fortunately for me, it, it was me this time. Please give it up for Chris Prather. He'll be facing the number eight seed from Riverview, Florida. Please put your hands together for Tom Dowdy. Look, TV. I'm a big, I'm a big Tom Dowdy fan. He knows it. And hey, why don't you try to find the head pin there, pal? We were able to work it out at the Oklahoma City Airport later that evening, but he's struggling early on. Efficiency of motion. Already up 21. Can Tom Doherty strike without Rob? Without Rob Stone. They're chanting Rob Stone. Doherty has to put the ball down. What do you say, Tom? Oh, no. Bartender. Make it a double. Shark finds another victim. That wraps it up. Prather has won game one. It was a forgettable first game for him. It, it sure was, and let's see, he's made a ball change. And let's see if he can find something. Now he's got something there. He's got something there. One strike against Prather in the first game. Prather matches Doherty there with the strike. He's made a ball change. Opening double for Prather. Three in a row. Ask for the push. Pushes all ten into the pit. Gets his second strike of this match. There we go! Oh, now he's, get, he's gonna give Prather a little something to think about. Flat 10. Another good one. Right now, Chris Prather, a strike. In good count, he's moving on to take on Jason Belmonte. The shark is circling his prey. Blood is in the water, and Doherty's about to go down. In the 10th frame, I think, I switched from an idol to an idol pearl, and that's where I threw all of the second game. And for me, it was just trying to control the pocket, but also, you know, kind of throw a couple more strikes than what we did the first match. You know, even though the, mat the score wasn't close, I knew that Doherty was going to bowl a better game. It was just trying to make sure that, you know, I could bowl another 220, 230 and at least make him work for it.
it was just trying to make sure that 